Hi, already missed me? Okay, I'm sorry, there is no giveaway because the comments have not passed 20% of the total amount of... <sighs> Guys, you know, you can comment multiple times, you can hit the like button, it's not that hard. But let's just leave that aside, I forgive you, I'm giving you another chance, let's do it. I'm really wanting to give something away, you just can't give something away without any reason. So give me a good reason to give something away, by sharing the video. Alright, so let's do this. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make your own toast bread. Roti, we call it khubz roti. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a toast bread, and it's a very easy recipe. And guess what? I'm not using my stand mixer today. So don't say you don't have a stand mixer, you can do it. I'm just going to do everything with my bare hands. Of course, I will wash them before doing that. But yeah, let's just get started. Shall we roll the intro? Let's cook American food. But it's not American food. Well, it's not American food. Alright, this is a pro tip. For the best result when you make your dough, you always want to measure stuff in grams. Don't do them in cups. Cups sucks. I know we are in the United States, everyone do cups. But cups sucks because people don't know how to measure with cups. So, go and invest in a small electronic um, scale. It's not expensive. It's really cheap, like 15 bucks. I think you can afford it. Can you afford going to McDonald's twice a week? Don't go to McDonald's twice a week and get one of these. Yeah, except if you're getting the 444, then don't go to McDonald's four times a week. All right, let's get started. First, we need to bloom our yeast. Into your measuring cup, add 315 grams of water. Make sure the water temperature is 90 Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius or anywhere in between those. Don't go too high because you're gonna kill your yeast. And then add your 5 grams of yeast to this amount of water. Add a half tablespoon of sugar and mix it all together and let it bloom for 10 minutes. Let's talk about ratio real quick. Always you want your yeast to be 1% of the total amount of flour you're using. So for this recipe we're using 500 grams of flour and 5 grams of yeast is 1% of 500 grams of flour. So always go with 1% ratio. Just a pro tip, I hope that was helpful. All right, keep watching the video. For our dry ingredients, Add 500 gram of flour. I'm using all-purpose flour, I promise. I'm just using multiple bags because I had those bags in the pantry and I'm trying to get rid of them. So just use all-purpose flour, 500 grams. And then add a teaspoon of salt. Remember, teaspoon, not a tablespoon. Don't make that mistake. And add two teaspoons of oil. That will help it a little bit, but you know, just do what I do. Okay, your yeast should look something like this, foamy and really good. You will start pouring it on your dough. Dry your hand a bit, make sure they are clean and start mixing. The start is gonna be hard, it's gonna be really gooey, but I promise you, working it a little bit, it's gonna turn to a perfect dough. When you get it going a bit, pour all that goodie out and start working it. Gonna get together very very fast. The right way to roll the dough, you don't press down on the on the table on it, you just roll it backward and forward basically in this motion. And the dough will do the rest of the job by itself. So I'm just creating a ball and then rolling it back and forth. You can use both hands to roll the dough. This is like rolling dough 101 for people who never roll the dough in their life. Like if you're pressing it on the table, it's gonna end up stacking on the table. So you just want to go in almost horizontal motion, motion a little bit with vertical change, but focus on your horizontal movement. You don't really need to flour or dust your table that much because the hydration is not very, very high. And if you're rolling it the right way, you won't need to do any of that messed up work. Our dough is getting together. Let's just hope Natasha doesn't decide to jump on the table. Natasha, my cat. Oh, by the way, if you're following the channel a long time ago and you're waiting for the DNA test for Maple, the test was not the best thing in the world. It just told me she's a German Shepherd. No, sorry, told me she's an Australian Shepherd, which I already know. So this just didn't give me the other percentage, so. Probably should do 
another test which has more results in it which like more expensive test basically because that one just cost me 50 bucks that was 50% off so yeah we'll see might do another test I don't know but she's a sweet sweet Australian Shepherd good with kids she's afraid of my cat and she's bad with farm animals like well not farm animals she's bad with birds she likes to hunt them all right we have the dough here when we have the dough we add butter next we will add three tablespoons of butter room temperature I already cut it and we're not gonna add it all at once we're gonna add it almost a tablespoon a time because if we add it all at once it won't cooperate and it won't get in the dough so this part is a bit messy messy get as much of that goody butter in it because if you didn't put butter it's gonna work the bread is gonna come fine except it's gonna be too white so I'm gonna have that goldish brown nice color you know you don't want your dough to be so pale I guess doesn't give you any it's not appetizing when it's too too pale so make sure you do this step right yeah the butter is always the messy part that's why it's much easier to do it with a stand mixer because easier to force the butter to cooperate can you overwork your dough with your hand if you were a machine yeah but if you're a normal human very rarely so don't be afraid you're not gonna overwork it so this shouldn't take us more than 10 minutes of time to cooperate all the butter go over the white spots that they come on the table because those basically are dough and butter and going over them will help us just cooperate them back to the dough and you always can use your scraper if it got intense like now I'm gonna time lapse this but y'all are gonna see I'm not gonna cut it like I'll just keep it all as a raw footage so you all can see what happened because I know a lot of cooking show they just don't, they don't show you the messy part they only show you the nice easy smooth parts as if it was a piece of cake but I am a home cook I know how messy cooking could be or could get See, now the dough is much, much smoother. It doesn't leave any white tracks on the table. You can now go over the white tracks and just collect them, collect your goodies. You can't even tell that we worked the dough on this table. It's really clean now. All right. When your dough is nice and glossy and shiny, as you can see, I don't know if I'm out of focus or in focus, hopefully I'm in focus, I don't have someone behind the camera, then just shape it in a bowl and shape it into a nice bowl. Give it a spank and then take a clean bowl, go ahead and generously oil your bowl. So it doesn't stuck in the bowl. I'm using olive oil. Use whatever oil you like. Just use the olive oil because it's handy. Then when you generously oil it, then cover it with a damp towel or a plastic wrap. If you're using plastic wrap, make sure you oil it because if you didn't oil it, it's gonna stick, it's gonna get messy, so it's gonna look pretty. And the goal of cooking makes everything look pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. It's not pretty. You don't eat it. It's pretty, you eat it. Even if it was disgusting. And then let it sit at room temperature for two hours or until double in size. Or you can put it in your oven with the oven light on. That will help it as well. While waiting for your dough to rise, just go ahead and oil your bread tray. I don't know what they call them. I think they call them bread tray something something. I don't really know. Just oil it because that would be really helpful later on. Definitely doubled in size. See, if we didn't put an oil, it's gonna be stuck in all over the place. All right, you know what we do next? So yeah, then you spank it. Let it deflate. Yeah, that's what we wanna see. See how goody good it is? Just enough flour to dust our surface. Grab your dough and let it fall into we're gonna just roll it almost half an inch thin. 
roll it into tight circle. There you have it. And we're gonna cover it again with a plastic wrap and let it sit for an hour. So let's talk a little bit. Ideally you wanna cover it with a plastic wrap and let it sit for an hour or until it almost doubles in size, in size before you cook it. But I'm trying a new approach in here. I want it to have still that good dome shape. So what I did, I put a warm water and a damp towel on top of it and I'm leaving it in the oven with the light on and hopefully that will create enough moisture in the air where the dough will not lose any moisture and it's just gonna keep expanding and keep the moisture in. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna let it rest for an hour. I will check at 30 minute point just to make sure that everything is going well. If it didn't, I will just go ahead and wrap it with a plastic wrap. I'm sorry, I forgot to film that. But when your dough double in size, bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit oven for 35 to 40 minutes or until it's golden brown and pretty looking. And here the result. Voila! That's a good boy over here. And now, let it rest and cool down a little bit before we get into it. Oh yeah. That's what we are talking about. All of us. That's what we're talking about. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.